All right, well, let's turn our attention from the East to the American West, where we will soon find Brian Chung. He's got his Patagonia's packed, his Nalgene is ready to go, and we are heading, Brian, out to Jackson Hole next week. Uh, the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium, hosted, as, as few often acknowledge, by the Kansas City Federal Reserve. Uh, that is set to take place. Um, of course, a pivotal meeting, as always, for the Fed chair, the sitting Fed chair, uh, typically speaks at this event. And the main conversation, one imagines, will be around tapering. Now, you followed all of the Fed speak over the last week. And as you think about the, the coming proceedings, what is top of mind for you in terms of what you think um, folks will be talking about, debating, and, and how, I guess, Powell's going to kind of frame this one? Well, Maz, as you mentioned, I'm getting my Patagonia ready. And of course, I might even bring my fun hat out to Jackson Hole when that conference does begin next Thursday. It'll be going through next Saturday of next week as well. But as you mentioned, tapering, obviously, on the minds of everyone that's watching this, although it's not clear we'll necessarily get that much clarity from the Fed chairman when he does make his remarks on Friday morning with regards to how the Fed might be approaching its $120 billion a month pace of asset purchases. But for what it's worth, every one of these economic symposiums, which they hold every year at the end of August, has a theme. And this year's theme is macroeconomic policy in an uneven economy. And when you look at that title, it does seem to be a relevant one in this COVID recovery. But you also have to consider what does uneven mean when you take a look at the data of what's at stake. We've got a chart here that uh, really highlights uh, the Fed's own data illustrating the uh, gap that we see between just white and black families, for example, the white family having a median wealth level almost eight times larger than that of the median black family. But uneven could also invite scrutiny into the Fed's approach to climate risk. This is a hot topic that's been brought up by the Fed's own governor, uh, Lael Brainerd. And what's interesting is that there's one group called 350.org. It's an environmentalist group that'll be on the ground there. I have a quote from what they have as a stance that they want to advocate on the ground there. They said, quote, we need a central bank that supports by POC communities fighting on the front lines of COVID-19 racial and economic injustice and climate destruction. That starts with replacing Jerome Powell as the Fed's chair with a true climate champion. This group doesn't say who they would want as a replacement, but these this is a group that's going to be physically out there at the Jackson Lake Lodge protesting uh, as they do have this uneven economy theme uh, out there. So it'll be interesting. We'll try to see if we can get an interview there. But broadly speaking, Jay Powell's speech, we do know based off of what the Fed said uh, in a release yesterday, will be on the broad subject of the economic outlook. So we don't know what that means. And for what it's worth, it looks like he might not even be on site to see those protesters because it seems like those remarks could be virtual. So a uh, kind of interesting uh, new updates that we're getting on the Jackson Hole Conference. But as you mentioned, I'll be out there with all those updates late next week, guys. Well, look, Brian, you know, the, I mean, the Jackson Hole Lodge is just it's way out there. It's like an hour into the park, not near Jackson at all. Total, total logistical uh, pain in the butt um, getting out there. But I, I suppose in the background of this, um, it is possible. I mean, we still have a few months to go here, but possible that this would be Powell's final Jackson Hole Symposium as the Fed chair. It could be. And uh, we have to remember the timeline here. So, again, the Fed chairman's uh, term as uh, after being appointed by uh, uh, President, former President Trump, uh, his uh, terms is set to expire in February of next year, which means that the Biden administration would have to make some sort of announcement uh, probably soon with regards to whether or not they're either going to replace him or whether or not they're going to renominate him. Now, again, based off of what I'm hearing, it's not like the administration is leaning one way or the other, but it does seem like there is some pressure as far as timing goes to make some sort of of announcement in the coming months. So again, we'll see whether or not the Biden administration decides to stay the course. Also remember that there are other vacancies on the board as well. So it's entirely possible that in conjunction with an announcement for what they'll do with Powell, they could also try to put up some other uh, people to fill those remaining two vacancies on the board as well. All right. What, I mean, what are you, you driving out there? You're off Monday, Tuesday. You can't <laughs> take you four days to I'm go going to camping. Jackson. I'm going camping. I'm going to take the time to meditate and then think about the questions that I'm going to ask for the Fed speakers that we'll have lined up next week. All right, Yahoo Finance is uh, Brian Chung en route to the great American West. Uh, Brian, we'll check in with you next time we see you. You'll be on Wyoming time.